Hey everybody, Kenny here. This video, I just want to kind of give a critique about the balancing of the various demons in the game Onanaki. Specifically, I would like to discuss the demon Zav. Now, the reason I specifically want to call out Zav is because this is a character that you get at the very beginning of the game. He's not the demon you start the game with, but he is the demon that you almost certainly will spend the entire game using. Because compared to literally every other demon in the game, he is a standout. He is defensively powerful in that he can both take a hit better than most of the characters and also is able to just avoid damage entirely by jumping out of the way. He is offensively powerful in that he has a wide array of abilities that he can use to devastate enemies throughout the entire game. And he is also the only demon in the game that actually has their backstory tie into the game itself. And with all of that, you would think one of two things. Either this is the demon that you started the game with, or this is the ultimate demon. One of those two things should be the case. And yet, for some reason, they decided to make him the first demon you find on your journey. And what's stranger still is that there are actually options they could have given the player at the point where he comes in that would have actually helped to balance things. They could have made it that you get the demon Zephyr instead of Zav at that spot. They could have made it you get the demon Tretze instead of Zav at that spot. They could have made it that you get the demon Dia instead of Zav at that spot. They could have made it that you get the demon Ragan instead of Zav at that spot. Like they have so many options that would have been way more balanced for the way that this game is instead of having you start the game getting this character because there's honestly once you have him there is no reason to play as anyone else you can literally like it literally doesn't matter who you take with you once you have zap now you could have any combination of the other demons with you in any slot and just using Zav the whole time, and it wouldn't make a difference. With everyone else, if you want to maximize their potential, if you want them to really be something useful, then you need to go and do delve into the systems. You need to make sure that they have the right skill set up. You need to make sure that they have the right shade stone set up on their weapons, that their stuff's all upgraded, that they have other demons assigned in the same loadout that give shared skills that synergize with that demon to make sure that you're getting the most out of them like you know like the the build video i did for gavad you know like that something like that it you know, is incredibly powerful but only because the other demons have skills that they share with each other but for zav it doesn't matter if the other demons have skills they can share with him it doesn't like Zav, if you were able to just remove the other demons from your party, Zav would still be good. And he's the only demon you can say that for. Like if you were to go play the entire game and not level up any of the other demons, you were to make sure that you only just stuck to one demon the entire game, like some kind of like Pokemon Nuzlocke type thing. Like so, you know, like you only play as Aisha the entire game. You only play as Will, as Izana, as Ragan, as Dia, as Gavad, as Dusika, as Trece, as Zephyr. If you were to do a playthrough where like that was the only demon you leveled up the entire game, then all of them would be terrible. Not a one of them would be of any worth to you because if you just focus on one of them they don't have enough in their kit to fully round them out either you know they don't have enough defenses to be able to take a hit uh, they don't have enough damage to be able to overcome enemy defenses or uh, just exist on their own without some kind of extra oomph to keep them going. Like, you know, they're, like, none of them are a fully formed character on their own, except for Zav, and you get him at the start. Like, this should be the last demon you get in the game 
but it's the first. Like you get you you start with you start with Aisha, and then you get Zev right away during the tutorial area. You get Zev. You know, you get him in the very first fall <laughs> before right before the very first boss fight of the game. You get Zev, and there and from that moment moment on, like you have no reason to play to switch to any of these other characters because they are terrible to start with. And they all take time to get going before they're actually worth using. You know, before you actually have access to the majority of Dia's skills, she is terrible. She is not fun to use at all. Until you unlock certain skills with Lusica, she's actually unplayable. Like she has a barrier skill that is worthless as a mechanic until you get the skill that makes it that when you put the barrier down, you're able to move around. You actually have to invest to get the ability to make her functional as a defensive unit. Because when you put her barrier down and you're not able to attack or move, you just have to sit, sit there inside of your barrier. All that's doing is making it that you're stuck sitting there while everything is hitting you for the amount of time that your barrier is up for. And it doesn't reduce the damage by so much that a character like this can just take it. You know, with Gavad and will the both of them are able to put up a shield and hold that up there until the enemy swings on them and then put it down and start attacking on their own now for them the difference between defending and attacking is whether or not you're holding a button but for lucica until you invest in a particular skill in her skill tree her defensive option is a commitment a commitment that does not help you in any way you know like every single one of these characters they, they have very they have severe drawbacks like Rigan, he is not good against groups he is a single target focused unit but if you actually want to get him the stones he needs to be able to to get him all of his skills then you need to be fighting a lot of enemies because you're not going to be able to fight have him fight one enemy and have him get all the stones he needs because that's not how the game works you know, the, the way that the leveling works is that, well, not the leveling, but the way that getting the stones works is that every time you attack with the character, every time you do something that gains them affinity, that is how they gain the stones. Like, you know, there is a chance that they'll just get one from doing, from taking those actions. And for Rigan, like his whole thing is set up for him to be fighting against one enemy. This whole thing is just, you know, like one-on-one -on -one duels kind of thing. So if it's a one-on-one -on -one duel guy in a game where you're fighting hordes of enemies, you know, how is this a character that's worth playing as? Now, he has great stuff in his kit, stuff that makes him really great to pair with other characters, but on his own, like, you know, you want him, you want to build him up to be able to fight big one-on-one -on -one fights. You know, so like, it's just, it's so unbalanced, you know, like you, like you have all of these characters set up in a way where they aren't fun to use until you get very far with them into actually not just them, but other characters that synergize with them in the game. The only one that I could say feels good almost from the moment you get them is Trece. He's the only other character that's kind of balanced like Zav. He isn't as good as Zav. Like Zav is still like the best of the best, but the only one that comes close is Trece. Because eventually you can get him a skill that makes it that he can also kind of dive away to avoid enemy attacks. He can't go as far as Zav can, like Zephyr can go further, but you know, at least you know, Trece has the output that Zav has and almost the evasiveness that Zav has. But you know, like Zav still also has all of the defensive stuff in his kit to make it that he can do all of his skills. As soon as you get him the skill Ardor, he can no longer be staggered when hit by attacks from the front. So as long as you're having him face the enemy, from that point on, you know, you're able to use all of his skills. And it's a very early skill to get for him. It's right there. <laughs> it's not, Sweep isn't the first skill he starts with, but, you know, like getting from here to here is very fast. You just need two points to be able to get him his best skill. His best passive skill. And from that point on, 
you know, he is able to deal with anything in the game. You just go and pick the loadout that works best for you. you know, do you want to have a long range attack? Impale. You know, it's a great attack that attacks enemies at a very long range and hits groups of enemies. You, know, you want something that can block and does a lot of damage? Windmill. Literally puts up a big old shield in front of him, preventing enemies from getting to him, and then he slams right through them, dealing a bunch of damage. You just want a skill that hits multiple times and hits for really good damage. Crusade. <laughs> you know, he just flies up from the ground while Agachi dashes through the enemy group. You, know, you just want a group clearing skill? Avalon. Throws his spear up in the air, explodes. Huge area damage. And you know, he has four other skills, and they're all really good too. But you know, like he has stuff from the beginning that make him above and beyond everything else. Like everyone else, like you know, like Aisha, her best skill is incredibly difficult to actually pull off because she leaps forward. She has a very long windup. She leaps forward, and most of the time you jump over the enemy, you know, jump past the enemy because enemies don't stop you when you run into them. So she'll jump past them, use her thing, and it'll hit a large area wherever she landed, and it won't hit anything behind her. So just the area starting from where her sword hits. So Aisha, you know, her best skill, not reliable. And you know, the rest of the characters, like they are not particularly reliable. You know, they they all have and and you know, and the so the issue of what I'm going for here, I'm not saying that the rest of these characters are bad. I'm saying that Zav is incredibly imbalanced compared to the others. Like these characters are all balanced properly for where they are found in the game, except for Zav. Zav should be the last demon you get, and he is should be the last demon because he is so overpowered that it doesn't make sense to have him until you've already used everyone else and you've seen the game from all the different balancing perspectives. You you know that. As Gavad, you're moving slowly and you attack slowly and you have to think through when to attack and when to block. You know, like you, you've you learned that, you know, oh, as a character who can hit from mid-range with Rete, I need to be able to know if the time to use this skill is when I'm in the middle of a group or if I should be trying to get into the middle of a group to get my next attack off you know, or do i want to send out a skill that hits from a distance or something that heals me you know like you know like you have all of these different balancing mechanics in place for everyone else that you know like are a good thing you know, these are all good things that all these characters you know like they have these faults in their setup that make you want to have multiple characters set up in a party so that you are switching between them to try out different things. But once you have Zav, you don't need to ever do that. This character is terrible game design because it eliminates the need to balance your party. Once again, you know, like there like these systems exist in the game that make it that using these characters is still good eventually, but the designers failed by making him available so early. That's all I wanted to bring up in this video. I just want to give a criticism about the game balance because this is something that kind of ruined the game for me in a lot of ways. Even though like I enjoyed the game overall, like I, I think the story is trash, but like the actual gameplay I thought was very good, except for the fact that when I was getting to the point where I knew that I wasn't going to be able to use him anymore if I wanted to keep leveling, like I felt sad because I was like, okay, now I have to start learning how to play the game. I went the entire game not really knowing how to play the game because I was focusing on this character that allowed me to play the game without knowing how to play the game. That's all I wanted to say there. I don't know if Tokyo RPG Factory still exists. I don't know if they got shut down or what. Like I haven't heard anything about what their next project is. But if they are still working on games, then I really hope that their next project, they really give thought into the story and the gameplay. And hopefully, and this is my greatest hope for that studio, they put forth the effort to make sure that their story and gameplay do not 
hurt each other. If they don't do something with the story that makes it that the gameplay feels like it was just an afterthought with how they were designing the game or vice versa. Because in this case, like my favorite thing when I first played the demo for this game was that each of these characters in their skill tree had these memories. And these memories are what locked off the rest of their skills. And I really, I really wanted so bad to make a whole series of videos on each of these characters. I wanted to do a whole thing where I recontextualized all of their, all of the, their entire lore that they went through and just to uh, put it in a way that made it feel like it tied in better with the story of the game. But these stories are nonsense. Zav is the only character in this game, the only one of the demons that actually has a story connection where you can actually go, oh, this, this is what happened to Zav. He's the only one that, that can do that. The only other character that has something that shows up at all is Lucica. Lucica has a thing that happens after you beat the game and you only know it's something that involves Lucica because there's a side quest that you get where the character mentions it. Now, the character mentions the thing that involves Lucica. But like I said, it's a side quest thing. It's not part of the main story and it's happening this post game. After you beat the game, you can do that side quest that involves Lucica. And it's not like Lucica comes out and says something about it. It's just a character mentions that it involves her in some way. I'm not going to go into what that was, but like she's the only other character that has anything. But Zav is actually a character in the game. Like you actually meet Zav as part of the story. We're not going to go into what that, you know, like what his role was or anything, but you do actually meet Zav in the game, even though they never actually say his name. Like you do actually meet him, but no one else, like you know, there is like all of the lore you get for every other character never mounts to anything. Like there's never like the, like their role, like their whole history was pointless. Like, you know, why do we need to know how these characters died if we can't do anything about it? Like, you know, like, like you're, we're literally saying that like there's no after for these characters that, you know, that they, like we went through the trouble of learning who they were you able to say, oh, that sucks, man. Well, yeah, so I'm going to keep using you to further my own skills now. Thanks for having a terrible life and lending me your power. You know, like there's literally nothing that ties this in to the story. And by doing it like that, it destroyed my enjoyment of this game. It made it that I could not enjoy this game outside of the fact that I enjoy the gameplay itself because the tie between the story and the gameplay became just an absolutely sick joke and the devs should feel ashamed for that. But I do hope that their next project will not be like this, assuming that they are still making games. Anyways, if you like this video, appreciate doing all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, Vivictus, Bison Omaris, and bye.